Get out. Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to another What Tank video and today I'm going to talk about autoloaders because they're kind of a thing that's different from any other thing in the game. Now at low tiers you get quite a few tanks that have guns with clips and magazines and th that do burst damage in the same way. They're not really autoloaders. Those are kind of, uh, from tier 6 up you start to get autoloaders um, and guns that are autoloading. But you can kind of get a flavour of what they're like at the low tiers with some of these um, these uh, guns with magazines. And any gun these days, at post 8.8, .8, a, a useful thing to know is that it basically has this little symbol next to it here. And that tells you this is a gun with a magazine. And that's true of any tank that has a gun with a magazine. It now has that symbol so you can tell. So what's what's different about these guns with uh, magazines and autoloaders? Basically you're, you're all about burst damage. You're about doing quite a lot of damage at once and then having a, a relatively long reload time afterwards. And that's kind of how you would describe high alpha guns, but they're not really the same because for one thing they're going to have a long reload and for another thing the tanks are attached to are generally quite different. The, uh, yeah, the, the main characteristic is that you have a magazine of shells and it, it uh, the low I'm not going to talk about the low tiers too much um I'm mostly going to talk be talking about the the uh the, the proper auto loaders what you're having to do is basically find ways to get up the en up, up to the up get up the enemy um no comment get up to the enemy and do as much damage as possible in as short a space as possible. High high rate of fire guns and um, high alpha guns are they they both have well the tanks are attached to both have pretty different playstyles and autoloaders are kind of a hybrid of the two because it, it's you can look at it as either being an extreme sort of. Uh, cumulative alpha damage or extreme rate of fire damage but it's it's basically it's in between rate of um rate of fire guns basically is all about pegging away at the enemy and using your rate of fire to just chip away at their hit points uh, over you know just keep pumping out the shells and taking off the health and you know, generally those guns don't have high alpha high alpha guns it's all about the that putting the shell in withdrawing, reloading, and then popping out again, and preserving your hit points as long as possible. And that's kind of what you're doing with these as well, because they tend to be more fragile tanks. You you get two main lines of... Uh, well, three actually. Three main lines across two nations of autoloaders. Now, there's the American tree, T-71 to the T-57 heavy, and that's... You go from light tanks to a heavy tank, so they're, they're kind of a mixed bunch, but they're all autoloaders. And there's two main French trees, from tier 8 to tier 10 on the heavy line, and from tier 6 to tier 10 on the light slash medium line. The tier 10 um, tank destroyer and artillery also get autoloading systems, but I haven't played either of those, so I can't really comment on them too much, but... This is intended to be quite a general video, so some of what I'm saying will apply to all the autoloaders in the game, basically. One characteristic that the autoloaders generally tend to share is not having fantastic armour. And the Americans have got okay armour, and the hull armour on the tier 9 and 10 French heavies is actually okay as well, but they've got very, very weak turrets, so it's not really... the effective armour is not terribly good. You really have to think differently when playing autoloaders because they are th this one and the 1390 have probably got the longest reload times but you always always have to have a way out it's not like a high alpha gun where you you can just withdraw around a corner and wait out you know the 10 or 15 second reload this has a a 50 second reload for the clip it could be more, depending on obviously your crew skills and what um, what setup you're using, but that requires some really careful management of um, 
basically how you're approaching an enemy, but also the circumstances under which you're approaching an enemy, and also the enemies that you're picking to 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 approach and engage, because you you're only dangerous so long as you have that full clip, so long as you have that potential, and once you're reloading, you're basically completely vulnerable. So you always have to have in mind when looking at the minimap, you have to think, right, how how do I get away from potentially a situation where how how do I approach this enemy or group of enemies, fire my shot, and then run away again with taking the least amount of damage possible? Because if you're ever backed into a corner and you you fired your last shot and you're surrounded by enemies, that's it, you're just dead. So you never ever want to be in that situation. You want to always be able to run away to reload. And sometimes, as in this one, which is, you know, like I said, nearly a minute, you really need to be able to withdraw to somewhere safe and sort of reasonably far back so that you're not going to get spotted and hit by anything in the meantime. You you really do need to use the mobility of these machines and you also like I've said with the, with the planning not only are you thinking about routes to and from but also you have to be thinking about what enemies are engaging burst damage is, is most effective when you're concentrating fire on one target now the 5100 gets six shells and the gun is pretty damn good on the 5100 you really ideally want to be firing all those shells at a full health enemy heavy tank or a tank destroy or something because you have the power to take them down from full health with one clip and that way you're getting like the maximum potential out of your shells if you're spreading your shots around at uh, lots of different enemies then you're kind of wasting the potential a bit and yes you're still doing the damage but the power of this thing is the ability to take down enemy tanks very hard and very fast Balanced against that is the fact that you don't have particularly good armor, and sometimes you are going to take a hit or two in doing that. So you always have to be doing a calculation in your head as well as everything else. Is it worth taking a hit to do the damage here? And that's kind of that one comes from experience. You you have to know what enemy guns are capable of. You have to know your escape route is secure, and you have to be sure that you're target is of sufficient value because you're very rarely going to be bouncing shots in a lot of these tanks and the light tanks especially um, they you've got to be really sneaky um, the, the, the heavies you can be engaging other heavies not head-on exactly but you can be engaging other heavies and maybe maybe taking a hit in the process because you, you're really exchanging um, damage for hit points but with the light tanks, you do not have the hit points, so it's all about being a lot more sneaky, and especially with, with the, the 12T and the 1375, the gun selection means that you have to uh, you, you have to really be getting around to shoot people in the sides and rear, so that that requires a good deal more thought. That That's more the combination of that burst damage with the light tank playstyle. They're more kind of traditional light tanks. I, I think the heavies are kind of more idiosyncratic than the light tanks. And I will say that I actually bought this thing um, the first time I bought it was a while ago. And I played about 50 battles in it and I was terrible and I did not like it at all. And I just wasn't thinking about it the right way. I was playing it all wrong. And to be fair, I knew I was playing it wrong and I knew that's why I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't think it was a bad tank. It wasn't until I started playing the French light autoloaders that I really started to get into that mindset of um, using using that burst potential, basically, and using the mobility, because the French heavy autoloaders especially are pretty nimble machines, and you, you have to make use of that. And now I've come back to it, I find I'm actually enjoying it a heck of a lot more. So I want to I want to wrap this section up by saying, if you want some flavour of what the auto loaders are like at, at higher tiers, uh, the best one at the lower tiers, the best of the the magazine guns to try, is actually 
this thing, it's the Panzer 2J, and using that top auto cannon there, the 3 centimeter Mark 103, or the, well, is that a Mark 103 or an MK 103? I, I want to say Mark 103. Anyway, because that thing is, it's a pretty punchy gun. It's got a load of pen. The, the damage isn't great per shell. But there's like a, a 15 second reload in between each clip. And at tier 3, that is pretty long. And that's the best analog I can think of of playing um, auto loaders at higher tiers. When there's obviously much higher alpha guns around. So, yeah, if you're interested in... in if you want to know how it feels to play an auto loader, if you want to know... Um, if you want to get some flavour of what the autoloaders are like at the higher tiers, I would say go research this thing and play it for a while because that gives you a fairly good idea of the playstyle required. And obviously lower tiers, yes, it's quite a bit different, but once you've once you've um, become somewhat confident in this thing, I would then say go go play the AMX 12T, the 1375, or even the 5100. Or the T seventy one is another another good fun machine to get because these are all tanks that require a very particular play style. And if you're coming to it without any kind of prior experience of um, managing those re long reload times and managing that relative lack of armor, uh, you're going to struggle as I struggled the first time with fifty one hundred. But if you've got some experience under your belt, even if it's at a, a lower tier, and it's not strictly analogous, but if you've got some idea what you're doing, then it really helps a lot. So that would be my recommendation for anyone interested. Go buy this thing. It's only 20,000 credits. The research costs aren't exactly exorbitant. And um, it's tier 3, so you're going to get to it fairly quickly. So what I will do is I'll I'll shut up at this point about you know but I'll stop blethering about auto loaders and the the theory of auto loaders and how you should use auto loaders and I will show you a replay of my 5100 where I did a, a pretty nice amount of damage and managed to get a, a top gun and uh, I think it showcases how you have to think about auto loaders when you're playing them so we will uh, we will move swiftly onto that and. Uh, have some actual gameplay and not just looking at uh, my garage which is so interesting you guys so interesting and here we are and I'm top tier and it's uh, we're on Live Oaks and being top tier is really very nice especially in the 5100 because like I said you can kill same tier heavies with a full clip so you are gonna be treated as a big threat by the enemy team you always have to bear that in mind Generally, if you're in an autoloader tank, you don't have the armor, like I said, you're a soft target, so it never pays to be aggressive early on, or it rarely does. Sometimes, I mean, it depends on your playstyle, it depends on the situation and the teams, but if you're rushing in right at the forefront, um, you're going to be catching everybody's fire and you're just going to die pointlessly, and I do see this sometimes. So I'm actually going to hang back and maybe see what you know see what the rest of the team is doing see what the enemy team is doing because I can I can lay down some fire from up here and I can actually use the terrain and fall back and reload that way but if I rush into town just now uh, yeah I, that was a chancy shot but I tried it anyway if I rush into town just now that is potentially there we go that was kind of a wasted shell. That was definitely a, a kill secure, but uh, yeah, I thought, why not? Um, what was I saying? Yeah, if I just rush in ahead with, with the IS-3, you know, he's got the armor to be at the forefront. I really do not. I've only got my hit points, and I want to preserve those as long as possible. Sometimes, actually, that, that uh, threat factor can really work in your favor, because if somebody... Let's say you're facing off against a lone single enemy, they are going to be pretty reluctant to face off against you, especially if they don't know how many shots you've got left. Oh, excuse my phone there. If they don't know how many shots you've got left, because potentially you could maybe kill them in one go. It, um, it really depends on the situation, though. 
So, like I said, I'm being cautious at the beginning here because, generally speaking, yes, you've got the speed to get in at the forefront, but if you put yourself in a situation where you can't get away again, you're pretty much just screwed. Now, I saw this IS-3 was in trouble, and I thought, okay, given the opposition, it's a Carnarvon, which isn't especially high alpha. The IS is, but he's sort of lost half his health already. There's a Ferdy who is further back, so he's not too much trouble right now. And, oh, okay, there's the second um, tank destroyer, the SU-152. Those are both problematic, so I've decided to reload, and I know I've got... I'm banking that I've got the time to reload, because the IS-3 is still full health. I'm more dangerous with a full clip than I am with even even four shots out of six left. Yes, I could still do damage with those four shots, but you're going to have to reload at some point anyway, and you might as well do it beforehand, so you're getting that full shock potential. So this IS-3 is taking a bit of a battering. This is... I am taking a big risk here, a really big risk. And, yeah, there's that Ferdy coming around to flank. He doesn't know I'm there, but he does now. So, I... Yeah, he's repaired. I know I'm going to take a hit, but... Oh, ouch, yeah, that was a lot of hit points, because yeah, he's a Ferdy. But I've just taken him out, and I've actually still got two shots remaining. So, what's my next target going to be? There's, a, there's an IS-3, who's uh, turned up. And... I am considering my options here. Oh, there we go. Take a sneak peek. He's not looking. Can I take him? Yes, there we go. Okay, that's that's another enemy down. But now I've got reload to deal with. And I just have to... This is the really risky part. So I'm, I'm going to back up because if those guys overwhelm that IS-3 and come around that corner, I am helpless. I am completely helpless. So I'm just going to back way the hell up here. And it may seem like I'm I'm running away, but... You really have to have this in mind. You have to think, right, how far should I withdraw? How far do I need to be... Uh, how far back do I need to be to be safe from getting hit by the enemy sniping? But I've nearly reloaded at this point, so that's good. The IS-3 is still alive. There's an Indian Panzer that's moved up as well. And I've got an opportunity here, just as soon as I've reloaded. There we go, there's another one down. And I'm just looking for shots on this Ferdy, but... Yeah, he's still full health, so I don't want to engage him head to head, that would be a spectacularly bad idea, given that I already took a hit from a 30. Indian Panzer's moving up, so I'm going to move up as well, because with the two of us, we can actually... There we go, he fired, he's now mine, he's dead meat. Nice, okay, there we go, five kills, 2k damage, and it's la that full health 30, but I've got three shots left, so the Indian Panzer shoots him once or twice potentially I could kill this guy as well and this is where I'm using my mobility and yeah, I got lucky here with what our team was doing but yeah, I've had a couple of kills secures, but even so, I've done pretty well, I have to say so I'm going to be sneaky here I am well, I thought I was going to be sneaky anyway but I wasn't actually, I just let the I could have I could have let the Ferdy take a shot from somebody else actually and I could have been sneaky. I could have got my my uh, top gun that way. Um, but I misremembered what I did. So there you go. So professional. But that IS-3 is still alive. I've still got 60% uh, of my hit points, just about. I could rush over and uh, try and nail that ISU for the top gun, but I decide I'm going to go for the T-44 because I can probably get there fastest of anyone. Yeah, reloading again, but I'm going to be reloaded by the time I get to him. Not enough, uh, fast enough to save the arty, but still, fast enough to nail that guy, potentially. So, yeah, that this is what I was talking about, using the, the shock value of that burst damage, and being able to take down full health or relatively high health uh, tanks. That is the value of an, an autoloader, is king of that sort of thing, that there is nothing else that can match an autoloader for that in the game. The only thing, you know, the next best is the really high alpha guns that some of the, the tank destroyers get, but for the the sheer amount of, of uh, hit points you can steal off somebody in a very short space of time, autoloaders are pretty much unmatched. 
I thought, you know, on the whole, that was a pretty nice game, and that that kind of shows what you should be doing. And I got lucky there. Like I said, I got lucky with what our team was doing, what the enemy team was doing. But that kind of... You always have to be kind of vulture-like in your mentality. You have to be looking for the, the lone tanks. You have to be looking for exposed flanks. You have to be using your mobility to um, basically sneak around and pump a whole lot of lead in somebody's ass in a very short space of time. That is the optimal way to play any auto loader. And like I said, you want to get some experience ideally before you actually jump into auto loaders. So play some of the low tier auto cannons. Have a go at those. And the Panzer 2G especially. Just tool around for a bit before you start jumping into things at higher tiers. And on the whole, if you get that experience, I think you can be much more effective. And somebody who is good in an auto loader can really disproportionately swing the balance of a battle like like there that was that was a lot of damage and a lot of kills and you'll see from the 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 uh the score there um that was by far the most damage of anyone on the team that that was pretty damn nice that was in fact double the damage of anyone else on the team pretty much and the xp you know reflected that quite nicely so yeah, auto loaders. Not the easiest tanks to get a uh, get a hang of, but once you do, they can be pretty rewarding. I think I want to wrap it up with a recommendation of uh, go for the French auto loaders first. I would say the American line is, is a bit um, odd in how it works with going from light tanks to medium tanks to heavy tanks, and you're getting quite a hefty crew penalty from that. So I would say either go for the French heavies because they can be really capable machines or the French lights because they you, you, you basically get auto loaders two tiers early and yes you're getting light matchmaking but if you've got your brain screwed in right you can do pretty well even so and once you get to the end of that line you get the batch out which is a really fearsome machine indeed so if you enjoyed this video found it informative you can hit the like button you can subscribe to my channel you can go check out my other what tank videos for some handy tips and advice on uh, all things world of tanks and of course as always stay tuned for more